Personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Change in bond rating impact on price. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, we're in the icon left-hand side, practice problems tab in the 11270 change in bond rating impact on price tab. Also, take a look at the immersive reader tool, the practice problems typically in the text area too, with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages, either listened to or read in them. In prior presentations, we've been calculating the bond price, assuming a market rate, remembering that a bond can basically be thought of as us loaning money to the issuer of the bond, typically being a corporation or a government entity in return, receiving interest payments, typically semi-annually or annually, as well as a face amount lump sum at maturity, which could be equal to the amount we paid for the bond, which you can think of as in essence, the return of the principal, but may differ in the event that the bond was issued at a discount or at a premium. Now in practice, how would we get to, or how would the market be determining the value of the bond? How would they know what and calculate what the market rate would be well they would be comparing it most likely to bonds of a similar nature bonds that have similar risk components to it so when we purchase the bond we have a risk component such as default risk meaning what if we don't get paid the interest payments or the amount at the maturity of the bond due to the issuer of the bond going bankrupt or something like that and not having the funds to be paying us back if we can choose between two bond issuers, one which is more secure than the other, the most secure typically being thought to be the U.S. government bonds because it's not likely that the government will not be able to pay given the fact that they can tax and basically print money, then we're going to go to the more secure uh, bond. The issuers of the bonds that are less secure, then you would expect that they would have to be paying out higher interest rates paying bigger rent in essence on the money that they are going to be borrowing in order to get the funding there so one of the major ways that we're going to be valuing that is be by using the rating agencies which can give ratings on the bonds so obviously from the issuer of the bonds perspective they would like the bonds to be rated as strongly as possible because if the rating goes down it would be perceived that there's going to be more risk involved with investing in those bonds and therefore they would have to issue the bonds with a higher uh, interest rate it would cost them a lot more to finance things to get loaning to get funding so and obviously on the investing side of things we're looking for the secure bonds we would like to have a secure investment with low risk but obviously with the low risk also comes most likely a less of a return because it's more of a guaranteed return and that's how the market will react to it so let's imagine a situation for example where the face amount of the bond is a thousand dollars it matures in 20 years it's semi-annual interest payments so we're going to get the interest payments every six months every half year instead of every year issued at the triple a rating so when they issued the bond it was at the triple a rating we're going to imagine that the rate or coupon rate on the bond is the same as the rate on the market because when they issued the bond they issued it for the market rate and then as time passes which we're going to imagine like right after for something happens suddenly we're going to say that the rating goes down to an aa3 rating and there's three major rating agencies that help to kind of rate the bonds but we're going to imagine it goes down to an aa3 and so you can see that that means that the market rate is going to be going up because in order for us to invest in a bond that's going to be more risky we would expect a higher uh, return so if the rating of a bond of a corporation's rating goes from a high rating a triple a to an uh, aa3 that's going to have an impact on the uh, debt securities so first let's let's just prove this first calculation we're going to imagine that both the rate of the bond coupon rate and the market rate are nine percent which means when i present value the first future cash flows we should get to the issue price the one thousand dollars the bond not being issued at a discount or premium at that point so if we present value for example the stream of interest payments we'd have the present value of the rate 
which we're gonna say is the 9% market rate divided by the two, because it's we're looking, we're gonna assume that's a yearly rate. We're gonna divide it by two to get to the semi-annual comma number of periods. Number of periods we're gonna say is 20. We're gonna multiply it times two. And it get, it get a little bit confusing when we go from semi-annual to annual, but we wanna practice these a little bit more complex calculations with the semi-annual calculations and assuming these are the annual rates. And then comma, we've got the payment, which is gonna be the $1,000 times the coupon uh, the coupon rate, which we're assuming is also 9% because we kept that at the same rate as the point and they issued it divided by two. So how much interest payments are we gonna be receiving? We're gonna be receiving 1000 times 0 0.09. That would be a year divided by two because it's semi-annual $45 every six months, not for, for 20 years or 40 time periods of six months. So same rate that we're used for the for the coupon rate and the market rate, present value of the 1000, bringing it back, that would be the rate of the 9% uh, comma number of periods is gonna be 20, sorry, 9% divided by two, number of periods is 20 times two comma comma future value $1,000 that's valued at the 171.93. Adding them together, we should get to the 1,000 because we use the same rate for the market rate and the rate on the bond, which could be the case at the point of issuance. And then we're gonna assume the next day, right after that the rating agency just tanked them and they went down to an AA3. Well, now that bond looks much worse <laughs> because now the market's gonna be demanding more uh, interest for a similar type of bond given its current uh, ranking system in terms of the risk involved with it. So now we've got the present value of the interest payments would be calculated as present value of the rate now at the 11%, which we're saying is the market rate divided by two to give, to give us the semi-annual comma number of periods we're gonna say is 20 times two comma, and then the payments are still calculated the same which is the 1000 times this 9%, which we said was the coupon rate, that doesn't change. The market rate now is the one that changes. So now we've got a difference between the two rates that at the 9%, so 1000 times 9% divided by two. So then we're gonna say the present value of the face amount, $1,000. We're gonna say the rate is now at the 11% divided by two comma, the number of periods is now 20 times two. The future value is the $1,000. Sorry, did I get the rate right? But yeah, the 11% divided by two should be the rate, comma, number of periods 20 times two, and the face amount 1,000 that is gonna be uh, brought back. And so now we've got the discount. So clearly we would be purchasing it at a discount uh, given the fact that now the market wants a return of 11% for similar bonds of a similar risk nature. But when it was issued, it was issued up here uh, when it had a higher rating at the 9%. So it's paying out 9%, but now the market wants 11%. We can't change the 9% if it had already been issued. So we're gonna compensate for that by adjusting the price. And we're gonna say, we'll pay you 839 54 for that bond uh, so that and then you can pay me back basically the the coupon rate based on the nine percent and then we'll get the 1000 at the maturity so once again bottom line of course being that part of the way the market is going to determine the risk level is going to be by the bond rating agencies and comparing similar bonds that are grouped in basically a uh, a similar nature and as a bond goes from a very secure rating to a less secure rating that's going to be very bad for the bond you can imagine if u.s government bonds for example if the rating goes down on our debt would be very bad <laughs> for for uh the debt right because then in order for us to finance it it's going to cost a lot more so it's very advantageous for trust to be there with regards to the lending process if the trust is there the lending is more likely to be there as trust dissipates then the the cash flow dissipates and it costs a lot more to get uh the lending on the investment side of course 
we might be willing to invest in bonds that are much more secure, even though they have a lesser rate of return. If we're investing in people that are less secure, then we're gonna want a higher rate of return to compensate. That's the general idea.